year, since 1982, are pulling out at the end of this season. So far, there's no sign that another major sponsor will be found to take their place. With half the clubs in the league in serious financial trouble, it's been clear for some time that the game needs a new image and new ways of raising money if it's not to go into terminal decline. Paul Burden has been along to First Division Luton Town, a club that was in the red, but which is now making a determined attempt to sell itself back into financial profit. At three o'clock on a Saturday afternoon, Kenilworth Road, home of Luton Town FC, is no place for a pessimist. If there is one currency which abounds in a football stadium, it is optimism. Optimism that the team will win. Optimism that they will make it to the top of the table. Underlying it all, optimism that the club will survive the crisis which is squeezing the league as never before. Since the war, costs have soared, gates have declined by half, and overshadowing almost everything else, the image of football has been shattered by violence, a problem which nine months ago made Luton the focus of attention. This was an isolated incident, but it's forced the club to commit itself to a radical new crowd policy. From next season, only home supporters will be admitted to the ground. One question to which football still has to find a satisfactory answer is, does the image of violence have an impact on the gate? Speaking personally, my own enthusiasm died the day I stood in the away supporters' end at Southampton and was spat upon by the home crowd. Surprisingly, you may think, in surveys of former football supporters, only 7% that give us their reason for staying away the fact of crowd trouble. Well, whatever the causes of football's present unpopularity, Luton here seem to be bucking the trend because while gates in general this season have gone down by 10%, the crowd at Kenilworth Road has had an increase, albeit a small one, of about 2%. The biggest factor in what is now happening at Luton is this man, the club chairman, Mr David Evans. Mr Evans has cleaned up in the city, Quite literally, he has the contract to brush and polish the stock exchange, though this is just a tiny part of the contract cleaning company, which over 25 years has made him a very wealthy man. His approach to business has been robust and radical. He's an apostle for the cause of privatization. He's now applying himself to the task of turning league soccer from a chronic loss maker into a self-financing industry. When I took over as chairman, we were losing about £7,000 a week. Uh, next year we're budging to break even, so we've made huge steps forward in the last two years. Uh, and when I took over, I agreed for a, for a period of time uh, and the other directors to loan the manager sufficient money to um, get a decent team together, and, and our league position suggests that the money was spent wisely. Um, we, in the trading situation, the club haven't put any money in at all, and the club is now on the verge of, of trading profitably. For Luton, as for every other league club, the one inescapable economic fact of life is the cost of players. The market worth of the Luton squad is about £2 million. Wages for players may account for three quarters of a club's expenditure. To meet that kind of bill has meant that 56 of the 92 league clubs lost money last season. For Luton, high wages and high transfer fees are the price of remaining in the first division. You know, if he wants to do it, you know, we'll, we'll give him every opportunity. But Luton's manager, Dave Pleat, knows that in this club, resources are limited. He can't afford to make an investment that he cannot defend on financial as well as footballing grounds. For Tim, and uh, if we can get him for under 100, I would be happy to do that deal. The 100, his old club, have asked for Mike Newell, actually has three noughts on the end, but Luton have managed to bring them down from that figure to £80,000. It's down to you. Wish you well. Opportunity. Good luck to you. Luton spent over £860,000 in the transfer market last year. But the club's boldest investment was not in men, but on some 13,000 square yards of artificial grass, a completely man-made playing surface. Paradoxically, the new pitch will help to secure the future of football here by reducing the club's dependence on the game as a source of income. Luton's synthetic turf is scarcely affected by wear or weather. Unlike traditional pitches, it can be available for commercial hire any day the club aren't using it for sporting and non-sporting purposes. Last year, to every £7 earned by Luton's players, this man added £5. Bill Tomlins is Luton's commercial director, organising a myriad activities to support the football. 
everything from lotteries and sales of programmes to large sponsorship deals with industry. His side of business will be the biggest beneficiary of the new pitch. We hire our pitch out for what a lot of people think as little as £100 for two hours. This has involved the local community, local business uh, companies playing football on here, local schools, we've had um, cubs, and we've also, in fact, fathers have had birthday parties. The opportunity to play on a first division pitch in this way, at this rate, has been marvellous. The uptake has been terrific. However, I mean, we still have to look from the commercial angle of uh, the use of that pitch, and I'm pleased to say that uh, We've now actually arranged with the local uh, American football team, the Luton Flyers, that Kenilworth Road will now be the home uh, of the uh, American football team. Yes, um, as you know, uh, part of our overall um, uh, redevelopment plan uh, for this coming summer was the building of the executive suites. Another money-making uh, ploy, the private the executive suites. Uh, Luton is planning to build 28, available on three-year leases for up to £24,000 each. 34 other clubs have similar developments, but several have found difficulty marketing them because of the government's ban on all alcohol in spectator areas. Luton's boxes will have their own separate bars to allow their occupants to drink legally. Even so, it could be some years before these little earners start to pay a dividend. Uh, I think that this particular club will, in the end, when I say in the end, in the next few years, become sufficiently profitable for us to take it to the USM, yes. And you'd like to float it on the, on the stock market? I would float it on the stock market. Once we can make a million pounds of the profit per year, and I see no reason why in three or four years from now we shouldn't, then we will certainly float it on the USM, because I think that by floating it on the USM, all the fans uh, can have a st stake in the club, their club. Without them, there is no club. As the clubs learn to live with lower attendances, commercial sponsorship is becoming ever more important. But there is some anxiety that money from this source may be increasingly hard to come by. Nevertheless, Luton have shown there are still good deals to be done. Bedford's, the American-owned lorry builders, are Luton's biggest sponsors. They're paying the club £750,000 over the next five years, and not for reasons of sentiment. I'm not really a, a mad, keen football fan. I go and watch Luton occasionally, if, particularly if we're sponsoring... Uh, the Mac, so that's not the reason for it. In business today, you can't make judgments on let's support them because they're local people. We have evaluated it. We think the investment we are making is really paying off for us. Is there a very specific index which tells you how much more aware your potential buying public is of Bedford trucks as a result of this? Yes, there you? are all sorts of indices that we can apply before and after games, before and after television exposure, for example, which confirmed to us that, yes, it is a good business investment. Perks for sponsors include pre-match entertainment in one of the club's hospitality suites. A similar standard of comfort is available to any private individual for a modest £550, a price which includes a seat at every home match. Also for sale, a player's eye view of the pitch, this is part of the package of treats available under a special one-match sponsorship deal to parties of up to 74 at around £25 a head. Luton have managed to carve up the whole match day into a dozen different sized saleable portions. This is in fact the player's office, this is where they report to. Even the player's dressing room, the private inner sanctum at most clubs, is on show to those who paid enough money. This afternoon, the club's most highly paid workers are matching on the field the work rate of the commercial department behind the stands. They're well on top of Aston Villa. A goal from top scorer Brian Steen makes the final score 2-0. Very smooth. Very smooth. We did enough with a better side. We might have knocked them off. The first ambition of Luton is to establish these players as one of the top teams of the first division. 
But post-victory euphoria won't help Luton achieve the financial goals. In the battle for sponsorship, they're competing simultaneously with all the other 91 clubs. With everyone dipping into the same pool, there may not be enough to go round. Paul Burden